Hi, welcome to another one of my survival skills videos. This is not necessarily a survival skill, but if you have a direct injected turbocharged car, this is a product that you should try to install. And it's relatively easy. This is really, a, they call it a catch can. It's really a replacement of uh, your PCV valve. Your PCV valve, what it does is that it will take the over um, pressurized gas and oil and pump it back through your valves your intake system I mean but what happens is that when it's going through your valves since it's direct injected there is no gasoline to clean those valves off and after a while they're gonna get all gummed up with oil now the product that I have gotten is called um, uh, is by Black Forest Industries and this is uh, something that I had called up a, um, a tuner shop and asked them what was the best one that they felt. And they felt this was the best. And uh, needs to say, it does come with the prices, $400 to $430. However, needs to say, the product is a well, very well-made product. It was a little, it, I had a bad uh, mount and I contact them and these are really stand up people they send me another one and here's the new one it fits perfectly this one didn't fit but what I'm also doing is that there's a drain valve on the bottom I unscrewed it and I ordered a um, what they call an engine oil drain valve valve from um, FumotoUSA.com and this is modeled uh, model number T2040 and this fits exactly in here so there, there's a gasket that goes in there. I'm going to put that in but I'll show you how this thing fits what this does is that there's a ball uh, joint in, uh, valve in here and when this thing gets filled you don't have to remove it all you have to do is flip the flip the valve open and it automatically drains out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it up to this hose and I'm going to drill the hole to the bottom and here um, I'll show you on the back side of the fender I'm going to go under here yeah, under here and I'm going to fit this through and I'm going to have this thing connected with some C clamps and um, I think they're called C clamps but anyways Whenever I need to drain this, and this is what you need to do every oil change, you just flip the um, flip this open. This is closed, but you flip it open, it will drain out. Put an oil catch down there, and then put it back into um, a recycling center. Um, so this I bought at Home Depot, and the size that fits this valve is uh, seven eighths. 5 inch diameter interior wise so in this you could you could get also at Home Depot this is, goes into aquarium pumps as well as uh, pool pumps and no I mean fountain pumps so I'm gonna like I said earlier the reason why this is so expensive they give you these braided hoses with with uh, nut fittings which are very expensive and everybody else gives you a little, uh, a little one of these C clamps, which are inferior, far, far inferior to this. So, you know, they'll give you a rubber hose and you fit that on there. Since you're doing it yourself, you might as well just get the ones that are better, easier to install, and it'll last forever. Okay, I'm, I'm going to slide this in from the bottom and eventually I'm going to connect the hose to it and that's where it's going to go. I'm going to put the hose on it and I'm going to put one of those C-clamps on it. Next item at hand, we're going to be removing these two pipes. Uh, fittings there's a little pressure thing you squeeze down on and you can rotate them out 
I'm gonna have to get a pair of pliers. Okay. And I had squeezed this one earlier and pulled it off too. And then you just wiggle it out. Okay, and then you wanna clean this stuff off. Don't let any dirt get in there. Especially this one, because this one we're gonna use again. This one. This one we're going to use again. Okay, now we got this baby off. Okay, now I'm going to start removing. screws okay I want to clean this off just a little bit so much oil is coming out of this thing okay so I have uh, snapped this thing back on. It's, it snaps on easier than it comes off. And I'm gonna slide this guy back on here. And hopefully everything matches up properly. Okay, I'm going to be mounting the bracket. Get that on there like this. Okay, I want to point out that this bracket is very close to this, uh, I believe this is the air conditioning pipe. So I put a piece of duct tape in between this aluminum pipe and this bracket here. So that it'll give it some cushion. It won't. It won't cut through this. And uh, I suggest that um, I'm being too lazy right now. But you know, maybe file this down, or maybe put a thicker piece of material here, so that um, it won't rub up against this. I end up removing the bracket anyways, so that I could uh, slip on a uh, hose on here. I, I just cut it and I slid it on there and it made it easier for me to mount the C-clamp with the hose onto the end of this um, catch can. So I'm going to be putting the bracket back in a minute. Okay, what you should try to do because of the hose on the bottom and it's going to take some uh, muscling. Put this bracket onto here first before you mount it. Otherwise, you're going to struggle all day and you're going to break all the threads on this uh, catch can. And then you go ahead and mount this animal on here. It's going to take a little struggling, but between here and here, you just push it down and you're ready to go. Okay, after a lot of finagling, I finally got it mounted. I've, that rubber piece I kept on fussing with, it kept on falling down as I pushed this bracket down. So I taped it on there first. and. 
the screw back there, I taped it all together because there's a washer and I, you know, screwed it down with this can attached to this bracket. That's the trick. Attach the can to the bracket and then the bracket to that little screw hole. You can see they're pretty tight. Okay, here's another part that has to go into the intake manifold. They give us two pieces here. They give us a little, um, a, an item that you could screw out or you could screw this one on so that in the future if you wanted to hook up a turbo boost gauge it's already done. You don't have to tap in anything. This here came out the bottom of this can and I replaced it with the valve so I don't need this anymore and now we're going to just shove this thing in there but I'm going to save this because I'm going to install a the pressure boost gauge in the near future so this thing just goes straight in and you gotta shove it in relatively tight and then turn it down that slides into this groove right here that plastic groove will stop it from moving out so we're ready to go and then there's a shorter I'm sorry there's a shorter one and a longer one. The longer one, of course, goes to the outside, and the shorter one goes to the inside. So let me just bend this guy on there first. I'll tighten it by hand later. I mean, I'll tighten it by with the wrench later. Now make sure you don't put it in the wrong one because one I think is a return and the other one is to go out. Okay, we have to do some finagling. I pushed it down a little bit. The bracket is somewhat flexible and I spin, spun these things back on. And uh, I just have to tighten this down and we're, we're done. Hi, it's been about a week since I have installed my catch can. And I'm about to do an oil change so I figure I might as well uh, have this maintained but it's only been a week here is that little that have a little screw thing and it tells you if there's anything in there you pull this out and as you can see there's some gunk in there so I'm gonna leave this loose I'm gonna have this I'm gonna catch some of the stuff that's coming out hopefully it'll come out because it looks very thick so I'm gonna reach in there and pull the valve open and um, and, and then also I'm gonna try to catch it put this container down here so here's some stuff it looks like gasoline only so it's not too bad well thanks for watching